let me handle it. <laughs> Pretty good run. She made me do it. <laughs> uh, let me see, where is it? Yeah, uh, there. to change it. It's terrible. Damien, dear boy, the lighting is more than sufficient. Do not call me dear boy. All right? All right. And it's sufficient as if it were a mortuary. But if you don't mind, I would like to see my painting. I mean, that's the whole thing. Hello? Hello? I'd like to, uh, I'd like to speak with the director. Oh, uh, very well, sir. I'll get her for you if you would just sign our guest register. Of course. Renee Murian, Mr. Angelo, how do you do? How do you do? I understand that recently you sold a Truman York for 1.2.3 million. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, we did. Winston Hope. Yes. Ah, what a shame. He's always one step ahead. Then you must know Hope is the foremost York collector in the world. Yes, I know. Unfortunately for me. However, if you're interested, Mr. Angelo, I do have another York I could show you. Really? I'd be very interested. This way. Beautiful work, don't you think? So typical of York's subtlety in the use of color and space. Mr. Angelo, what are you doing? Please! Sorry. I wouldn't do that. I got to tell him you're dealing with forgeries. A one year old Winston Hope. Interesting use of color and space, don't you think? You know, it's a place, don't you? No, but he's insane. Truman York. You're insane. York died five years ago. They never recovered his body. What are you saying? Are you saying York is a dead? Damien, where are you going? Damien! No, I'm afraid we don't have any hot days at the moment. But we're expecting several from California very soon. Well, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Oh, excuse me. If you have any questions, my name is Maureen. Is Mr. Graf in? You're? Just tell him it's an old friend from Mexico. 
Mr. Graff, a gentleman to see you. Says he's an old friend from Mexico. Thanks, yes, sir. Thanks. If you'll just follow me. What are you doing here? What the hell are you thinking about? I just came in for the day. Maybe two. Well, you shouldn't be here at all. It's too dangerous. Did you see this? From Art International. The Marion Gallery sold that painting to Winston Hope for over a million dollars. Yes, I know. It's a fake. I thought it might be, but then again, I thought it might be one of your earlier works I didn't know about. So anyway, I flew in this morning and I went to see Renee Nurian. And guess what? She's got another of my fakes on the wall. You know what I did? What? I destroyed it. You destroyed it? Have you gone mad? Why draw attention to yourself like that? The point is, Philip, I want you to get to the bottom of it. Well, I would love to get to the bottom of it. But if there are other figs of the quality of Hope's painting, then we have an obvious problem. They're still forgeries. Yes, but only one person can swear to that. You. And you're supposed to be dead. Oh, Truman. I worry about you. If it becomes known that you're still alive, then, then two things can happen, both bad. Oh, tell me. Of course, somebody could inform the police. Oh, and? Well, the price of your work could drop by 50%. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to cut your prices then, wouldn't you? Well, I don't do I don't represent you just for money. I do it because you're my friend. In the first place, I don't think anyone recognized me. Second, a flood of forgeries in the market is not going to raise my price, is it? No. All right, I'll try to see what I can find out. Good. I'm registered at the... Brown Palace Hotel, under the name Angelo. Michelangelo? Why not? I'll be in touch if I find out anything. Michelangelo, Michelangelo. Winston Hope, please. Maureen Gilman? Winston, I've got interesting news. What's up? Another shipment from south of the border? You might say that. Truman York showed up. What the hell are you talking about? Just what I said. He was just in here talking to Philip. He's staying at the Brown Palace Hotel. Calls himself Michelangelo. <sighs> he always was a little pretentious. He told Philip the painting you bought from Renee Nurian is a fake. Don't mention it to anyone. You know me. I'm afraid I do. So don't worry, I'll make it worth your while. Mmm, I just love it when you talk money. No kidding. Probably should have called first, but I uh, figured if I just showed up, I could cushion the shock or something. I don't understand any of this. What about the accident? I survived it. I hid out in the mountains until they stopped looking for me, and I managed to make it to Mexico. And that's where you've been? All this time? That's where I've been. Straightening myself out. Painting. Keeping a low profile. Wow. Why didn't you let me know? To be honest with you, I didn't. I didn't think you'd want to know. 
Well, what about the police? Why would you take the chance of coming back here? I had to see you. Me? What for? A second chance. <gasps> Miss Anne, I know how badly I screwed up. Things are different now. I'm different. I've been off drugs for four years, and all I can think about is being back together again. True, please. I love you. I love you. Probably more than I ever did. Philip's been... Philip's been keeping me up to date. So I know you're not involved. Are you? You've been in touch with Philip? We, I, I just left him. Somebody's been dumping forgeries of my work on the market, but what do you say? I say you're going too fast. I, I can't even think straight. We had something pretty special, pretty... pretty damn marvelous, in fact. At least until I screwed it up. But we can have it again. Come back to Mexico with me. We live like royalty. You can, you can sculpt and I'll paint, but we'll do it together. But this is all too much for me. I'll be in town until tomorrow. You don't know. You have no idea how many nights I cried myself to sleep when I thought you were dead. I know what I must have put you through. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. So many bad memories to get over. I know. Look. I I just need a little time to sort everything out. I'll call you in the morning. I promise. Overcoat. You're Truman York, aren't you? Uh, no. No, I think you're mistaken. Turn around or I'll shoot. Security! Face me, damn it! Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know who I am, don't you? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You ought to know. You, you, you killed my wife. I, I, mister, you got the wrong... You murdering bastard! <laughs> Are you all right? Ah, uh, yes, I'm fine. Uh, would you, uh, would you have somebody go up to 308 and bring my bag down, please? Uh, Do you have a, uh, a phone I could use? Yes, sir. Right this way. It's Truman. Um, listen, I got a problem. Well, um, someone's on to me. Is there any chance that I could uh, crash at the uh, studio tonight? I'll explain it all later. Please. Oh, that's great, baby. That's great. J just leave the key above the door for me. 
Thanks, baby. Thanks. Right? Right. In the morning. I lost him. We better call the police. All right. Taxi, sir? Yes. Where are we headed? 122 Market Street. Oh, you can put it in here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Follow that cab. Step on. Dead, the well-known artist reappeared in Denver on Saturday morning, was found murdered in an artist's studio Sunday morning. York was apparently killed in a tragic motorcycle accident five years ago. Police have arrested noted photographer Joel McKelvey on suspicion of first-degree murder. McKelvey's wife died in that same motorcycle wreck. So, why did this McKelvey call on us for representation? Obviously, he wants the best. Tell me this. Why are we interested in representing him? He's a friend of mine. From where? From pre-law, I minored in art, so did Joel. I thought it would be a breeze that almost blew my GPA. Anyway, I ended up here, and he went on to become a famous photographer, and the world was deprived of one more Perry Mason. Poor world. You didn't answer my question. Why do we want to represent him? Because he's innocent. I know him. He couldn't have done it. He wouldn't have done it. Just like that, huh? Yeah, well, sort of. Just like that. Well, then. We sort of better... Talk to him. Just like that. She was just a kid from a small town in Minnesota. And he was this, you know, glamorous celebrity. She didn't have a chance. And then he, then he killed her. He almost killed himself at the same time. I wish he had. But I swear, I had nothing to do with his murder. I had no reason to kill him. Mr. McKelvey. Why would anyone believe that? Don't you see? The day he killed Diane, he was drugged out of his skull. The cops saw him. He was still facing a charge of vehicular homicide. That's why he went down to Mexico. I mean, the point is, he was still facing a long prison sentence. All I had to do was sick the cops on him. Why did you follow York's cab? I don't know. I guess I still wanted him to admit to me face to face that he'd killed Diane. I even followed him upstairs, but just as I had my hand on the knob, well, I finally realized I'd only make a complete fool of myself. So, I just went away. How did you know York would be at the Brown Palace Hotel? I got a call at my studio, then I went over there and waited. Who called? I don't know. It's just some guy who said York was staying at the hotel under the name of Angelo. I didn't recognize the voice. Where were you at the time of the murder? I was home. Alone. No witnesses? No witnesses. Well, what do you think, Mr. Mason? 
I think... I think I want the truth. If you didn't intend to shoot him, why did you bring a gun to the hotel? The truth. When I went to the hotel, I did want to kill him. Sorry. All right. We'll represent you. Don't be sorry for telling the truth. Thank you. Thank you both. Do I have a chance? Everybody has a chance, Mr. McKelvey. You have one very good friend. We'll try to make it two. When I was an undergraduate, I remember seeing this film about painters, and there was a whole section on York. That's where I met Joel. We had this professor, Dr. Bainsworth, who collected these interviews on videotape. Almost every contemporary artist you could think of in York was one of them. Well, we should see the one on York. Bainsworth was a real fanatic. He used to feed all the tapes into a computer. What for? To make it easier for research. I could try to get the York tapes from Dr. Bainsworth. I'm not sure he's still at the university. I'm not sure where he is. Della. I'll start calling first thing in the morning. And what will we be doing? Well, you and Joel will be finding out who knew Mr. York was still alive and in the city. I'm sorry. I just been this emotional basket case since it happened. I've been looking for another studio. And every time I walk in here, I just... You were the one who found him. I called him. There was no answer, so I drove down here. He was just lying there. To see somebody you love like... Anyhow, I was... I was so hysterical when I called the police. I don't know how they even understood what I was saying. But five years ago... Weren't you the one who walked out? That doesn't mean I didn't love him. I just couldn't live with him anymore. He was into drugs then? Drugs, alcohol, other women. I just got to the point where I felt I had to save myself. Why did he come to see you? Wanted me to come back to Mexico with him. Swore he was clean now and... That he still loved me. He said we could live like kings down there. And what did you say? Nothing. So shocked at seeing him alive, I could barely talk. I went home that night and thought about it, and I finally decided I'd see yes when I saw him in the morning. Nothing here for me anymore. And God knows I loved him. I never stopped loving it. Mrs. York, I need to ask a few more questions. How long were the two of you together? We met when I was a student at the art center. He was teaching a drawing class. We were married three months later. That was nine years ago. <sighs> Excuse me. Those were Truman's canvases. This whole place used to be his. When he was gone, I took it over. I could just never bring myself to get rid of any of his things. Must have been so horrible. You said there was nothing for you here. Well, there's nobody I'm really close to, and 
My work hasn't exactly been taking the art world by storm. I certainly like what I see. You're on a very short list. The only reason I've survived this long is, except for one, I've had to sell all the paintings Truman left behind when he disappeared. Sold to whom? A man named Winston Hope. He was a big collector of Truman's. Did he know your husband was still alive? I don't know. But there's one man who knew. Philip Graff. He's your husband's art dealer. Truman said that Philip had been keeping him up to date and that he had just seen him. Well, thank you for your time, Mrs. York. I'm sorry I had to intrude. I take it you don't believe that Joel McKelvey killed my husband? No, I don't. I hope whoever did do it burns in hell. Goodbye, Ms. York. As a matter of fact, I didn't believe it was York, even after Damien said so. Not until I saw his picture in the paper after the murder. Excuse me, who's Damien? Damien Blakely, a young painter. I'm giving him a one-man show here next week. Hey, 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 you! Be careful with that. It's worth more than you are. Did Blakely know York personally? I, I don't think so. But he took off right after York did. And he seemed pretty upset, too. You said York claimed the painting he destroyed was a fake. Was it? No. My insurance company authenticated it, and they've agreed to pay me for the loss. Where'd you get the painting originally? From a collector in England when I was there last autumn. Lord Kingsley? Miss Scott here says that your claim to painting you sold to Winston Hope was also a forgery. Yes, but as far as I know, it's also genuine. I got it from the estate of a collector in California last year. Did you know York personally? No. Okay. Oh, and by the way, did either one of you tell anybody York was here that day? I told you. I, I didn't believe it was him. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. From now on, you don't open your mouth about any goings-on in this gallery. Do you hear me? Now, kindly return to the desk. What the hell was that all about? Damien, how long have you been here? Long enough to know that I don't like that guy. Who is he? His name's Milansky. He works for Perry Mason, Joel McKelvey's lawyer. Yeah, I've heard of Mason. He could be trouble. Yes, I knew Truman York was still alive. And yes, I did correspond with him from time to time. Why didn't you tell anyone? He was my friend. Well, maybe I was wrong to protect him, but I... I like to think that somebody would have done the same for me one day, if it had ever been necessary. I also knew that he was carrying on with your wife. I'm sorry. I tried to talk him out of it, but Lizanne was about to leave him. York came to see you the day he was killed. He told his wife. She told Perry Mason. He told me. Yes, he was here. And you know, he, he finally seemed to have uh, pulled himself together. Did you mention to anyone that you'd seen him? No, of course not. What did he want? Well, he was concerned about some forgeries of his work. There were two that he knew of. He wanted me to do something about it. Did you do anything? No. That night he was killed. You're probably the world's leading authority on York. Why didn't you challenge the authenticity? 
Well, York destroyed the one in the Nurian Gallery. And as for Hope's alleged fake, it's a brilliant work. <sighs> Until Saturday, I had no reason to believe that there were any fakes on the market. But Joel, over the years, I've sold a great many of your photographs. We go back a long way. I don't believe that you killed Truman York. And I assume that since he is defending you, Mr. Mason doesn't believe it either. I assume that too. Then before you go, Then he handed me this check. Hmm. 25,000, very generous. But we're already being paid. He said this isn't a fee. It's a reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of whomever murdered Truman York, assuming I didn't. Assuming you didn't. Of course, Graf just might be trying to cover his own guilt. All right. What else? Well, Renee Nurian said she didn't really believe it was York, even after this Damien Blakely told her that it was. But if York could make the forgery claim stick, then Nurian would be out of business. So there's motive. What about opportunity? York signed the guest register at the gallery, Michael Angelo, and he put down the Brown Palace Hotel. So she could have followed him from there to Lizanne York's studio, just like Joel did. See if she has an alibi. Damien Blakely is the one who recognized York and followed him out the door. But there's a lot I don't get about him. For example, he's generally considered a third-rate hack. But Nurian's giving him a one-man show. What motive would Damien Blakely have? All right, Ken, check him out. Let's not forget Lizanne York. She'll inherit whatever he had, and she certainly knew where York was when he was killed. Harry Mason's office. Who's calling, please? It's for you. Won't say who it is. Mason. Yes? Yes, I'll be there. Who's that? Some woman wants to meet me. In the garage. Mr. Mason? I think so. I'm Maureen Gilman. I work for Philip Graff. Your client came to see Mr. Graff today. Yes, he did. Philip gave him a check. A reward. Again, yes, he did. I think I have enough information to collect that money. You know who killed Truman York? I think it was Philip Graff, or one other person I could mention. What reason would Graff have had to kill York? I've been Mr. Graff's assistant for the last three years. A couple of times each year, I'd accept delivery of one or two crates from Mexico. Mr. Graff always unpacked them himself. Maybe a week later, he'd announce he'd just acquired another Truman York somewhere. So you figured York was sending paintings from Mexico and Graff was selling them? York was supposed to be dead, so the paintings brought in huge prices and huge commissions. So? So, the point is, if it came out York was alive, it'd be a big scandal. No more Philip Graff. Who is this uh, other person you were going to mention? Winston Hope. I called him right after York left. I told him York was in town and at the Brown Palace Hotel. Why? When I had scoped out Philip's scam, I contacted Winston and made a deal. I'd tip him off whenever a crate arrived from Mexico, so he'd get first crack at buying New York. In return, I got 5% of the purchase price. Very enterprising. I also told him York claimed the painting he bought from Renee Nurian was a fake. He paid over a million dollars for it. Ms. Gilman, you may indeed have first call on that reward. Good. I'll be in touch. I'll uh, have the check ready. Yes, 
that's all right. York sent me maybe a, oh, a dozen paintings in the last five years. Which you sold at inflated prices. Yorks go very high these days. Where were you at the time York was murdered? I was at home alone in my apartment in Humboldt Street. Can anyone substantiate that? Well, why would anyone need to? Are you implying that I had anything to do with York's murder? That's insane. He was my friend. And, 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 and why would I want to kill the goose that was laying all those beautiful golden eggs? I'm not implying anything, Mr. Graff. York is dead. Nobody can prove you were selling hardly dried canvases of a dead man, so you're safe. I had nothing to do with True's murder. Did you know York was spending the night at his wife's studio? No. No, he, uh, he told me he was registered at the Brown Palace Hotel. Sir, I can easily subpoena both your telephone records and those from Mrs. York's studio. Yes. All right, he phoned me from her studio. He wanted me to know where he was. The York paintings from Mexico. Did you sell any of those to Winston Hope? Yeah, maybe half. Then he is also a York expert. Tell me, how could he be fooled into buying a fake from Rene Nurian? Well, I believe it is a very brilliant forgery. You see, Mr. Mason, we're not talking about some old master that can be uh, authenticated by structural or chemical analysis or by, by any other scientific technique. To authenticate a contemporary work requires a very special eye. It is an art, a talent. And that is not given to just anyone. Now, Mr. Hope is a York enthusiast, but I would suggest that he wants, if he wants another York painting authenticated, then he should employ me. Thank you for your time, Mr. Graff. I'll be in touch. Uh, Mr. Mason, uh, does the news of the uh, Mexican paintings have to be made public? If... It helps me defend my client, yes. Thank you. Get your stuff together and get out. I want you gone in 15 minutes. You told him. No, no, I'm sorry. He figured it out for himself. Oh, well, don't worry. I was about to quit anyhow. He's the cheapest boss I ever worked for. I'm sure you'll find something very great very soon. Oh, I'm also counting on that reward money. So take good care of it. Mm. My name's Ken Melansky. I called for an appointment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Come on in. So, what do you want, Melansky? Well, uh... Oh, yeah, this is Mala Sikorsky. Um, how do you do? Hi. Hi. Uh, I know this is gonna sound like a line or something, but I know that I've seen you before. <laughs> She's one of the highest paid print models in the country. How many covers, babe? At least 15 last year. Modern woman, nouvelle, elegance, high style. And way back, she used to sit for me. And in between gigs, she still does. Don't you, babe? Sit, stand, lie down, whatever. <laughs> hmm. So, what's all this about? Can I talk to you alone for a minute? I need to ask you some questions about the murder of Truman York. All I know is what I read in the papers. And we can talk in front of Marla. Okay. 
I understand you were the one that identified York that day he made the disturbance at the Nurian Gallery. I didn't at first. I mean, he just sort of looked familiar. You know, but when he started yelling, fake and destroying the painting, then it all clicked. The receptionist at the gallery says that you left just after he did and that you seemed uh, upset. I wasn't that upset. I mean, you know, it was like seeing a ghost or something. Mother, why don't you relax for a few minutes? I rushed out because I had to get back here and get to work. I had already wasted most of the morning at the gallery, and I was way behind in my work getting ready for the show. You're one man exhibit, right? Right. You were waiting for me when I got back here. Remember? Mm-hmm. Did you tell anyone else that York was alive and in town? No. Not even Mala. Why not? Well, I guess I didn't think it was anybody else's business. Could you tell me where you were at the time of York's murder? Why the hell should I? Tell it to me or tell it to the court. What time was he killed? Coroner estimates about 10.30 that night. 10.30. The two of us were together. All night, as a matter of fact. You were here working that late? I wouldn't exactly call it working. And it wasn't exactly here. I'd say it was much more like play. And it was a Mala's. You don't mind, do you, babe? That true? You and he were together all night long? Do you have a problem with that? No. <laughs> no, I don't have a problem with that. Mind if I take a look around? So, you interested in art? Yeah, yeah. All these yours? Sure. Why wouldn't they be? So many different styles. You know Picasso? Do you know how many periods he went through? Picasso. Right. Well, thanks for your time. Sorry to have interrupted your work. Mind if I keep this brochure? No. If you get a chance, come by and see my show. Yeah, I'll try to make it. Nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Some business competitors think that my interest in art is just a cover-up. To con people into thinking that I'm actually human, this, of course, comes from men who have to go to a watchmaker when they have heart problems. <laughs> Do you remember our trek into Tibet? I got you that job, Joe. Yeah. And almost got me killed. You now, some of those photos are in this book. That was one of my first assignments. Joe, you never did sign your book for me. So, how about it? Sure. You know, with the murder trial coming up, I bet your photos could get twice the price. That is a very striking painting. Yes. I got that at York's first show. Turned out to be one of his personal favorites. He almost refused to sell it to me. The York you bought from the Nurian Gallery. Is it here? Sure is beautiful, isn't it? You know, of course, York claimed it was a fake. So I've heard. But I know as much about York as anyone else. And I think it's genuine. Of course, I'll let some experts examine it. If it turns out to be a forgery, I'll put it in the hands of my lawyers. Mr. Mason would like me to ask you a few questions. Really? I thought you'd like to ask me a few questions. Isn't it true that if York were still alive, your collection would drop sharply in value? Perhaps. But you see, Joel, I don't collect Yorks for investment. I collect them because they give me nourishment for the soul. Now, that's a rare commodity for someone in my line of work. Winston, where were you at the time of York's murder? From what I understand, he was killed between 10 and 11 at night. I was having dinner at Chez Louis. With Lizanne York, by the way. Yes. I understand you have a personal interest in her. We're good friends, that's it. If you were more than good friends, 
You might have had a very interesting motive to see York dead. But, as you say, you're just good friends. I'm telling you, there is no collector in England named Lord Kingsley. In fact, there's no Lord Kingsley, period. In other words, you lied to me. Did I say I got it from Lord Kingsley? No, I meant I bought it from an art broker who told me that's where he got it. Ms. Nurian, unless you tell me the truth, we're going to subpoena your records and have each and every York painting you ever sold examined for authenticity. In fact, Mr. Mason may decide to do that anyway. Please. Just the fact that it's being done could make it very rough on the gallery. Yes, sir. Of course, if they do turn out to be fakes, you'll face serious criminal charges. All right, I was lying. But if any Yorks I sold were fakes, I swear I didn't know. Where'd you get them? I mean, he swore to me they were genuine. Who swore? Damien Blakely. Well, where'd he get them? I don't know. You mean you didn't want to know? You had to realize there was a good chance they were fakes. Is that why you're giving him the one-man show, as partial payment for the forgeries? Yes. I mean, no, I told you, I didn't know they were forgeries. You stupid, big mouth fool. Can't you keep Hello, your... Hello, Mr. Blakely, I've got something for you. A subpoena. Yeah? Well, shove it. Might as well take it. You've already been served. I hate that. Wait here, I'll be right back. You drop it along the way. Thanks. You've just been served twice, Mr. Blakely. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Believe me, our little fun isn't over yet. Except that he's got an alibi, my money's on Blakely. Your accept is serious. Yeah, I know, but he's the one that supplied Nurian with the fake Yorks. He probably forged them himself. And if York exposed him, he'd be in deep trouble. <laughs> well, that certainly gives him a motive, but what makes you think he's the forger? Well, when I was at his studio, I saw these paintings of his. They were in all these different styles, but the main thing is the guy's got a violent streak a mile wide. If he's as violent as you say, be careful. Right. Speaking of motive, Winston Hope seems to have a pretty good one. You're saying his art collection would be worth a lot less if York stayed alive? Yeah. What about our other suspects? The only others who knew York was alive are Philip Graff, Lizanne York, Renee Nurian, Maureen Gilman, and you. Well, we'll stay on all of them. Della, I'd like you to chase the money trail. What money? The York forgery seemed to lie at the bottom of all this. I want to know where the profits went. Ken. I've been thinking about you and Blakely. I don't want any violence, so I'll go see him. 36 hours, 36 hours. The hearing starts in 36 hours. That's not a lot of time to come up with a lot more than we have right now. It's okay, I dropped by. Um, well, I was expecting someone else. You got a minute? Yeah, I guess. Come on in.
I better put something on. Well, you don't have to change it on my account. Didn't seem to bother you yesterday. Shouldn't bother me. Well, after a while, it didn't bother me. Uh, look, work is one thing. It's what I do for a living, but outside of work, it's an entirely different ballgame. Especially with a man I hardly even know. We could get to know each other. So, what do you want? I just wanted to confirm that you and Damien Blakely were together the night that Truman York was murdered. I told you we were. Yeah, I know, but I thought maybe if he wasn't around, you might remember it differently. I remember it exactly the way it was. We were together here the entire night. Are you and he a couple? You know, a long time ago we were. We still go out a lot, and um, every once in a while we end up in bed together, for old time's sake, I guess. So you're not seeing anybody special right now? Is that your business? No, it's not. But I figured maybe some night we could have dinner together. Um, look, I think you've got the wrong idea about me. I don't have any idea about you, except that I thought maybe it might be nice to spend a quiet evening together. All right, why don't you just give me a call? But I'm expecting somebody, and it might look kind of funny if you were here. Yeah, okay. So what about tonight? Dinner. Yeah, but you know what? I really got to do. Well, I'll pick you up at eight. painting I have left of truths. It's very good. Yes, it's also the reason why I was having dinner at Chez Louis with Winston Hope that night. What time did he take you home? Oh, about 11.15. You were together the whole evening? Yes. Except for about a half an hour. Half an hour? Mm, Winston excused himself, said he had to make a business call. He was gone for so long, I was ready to walk out. When he finally came back, very apologetic. Said he had trouble getting an overseas line. Again, I like your work. Thank you. But I'm afraid if they were really good, they'd be in other people's houses instead of mine. Do you know uh, Rene Nurian? Yeah, I've met her a few times. Gallery openings, that kind of thing. What about Damien Blakely? The painter? I've heard the name. That's about all. Of course you know Philip Graff. Of course. For years. He's also a neighbor. I thought he lived on the other side of town. Well, he does, but maybe you don't know this about Philip. He started as a painter himself. When he couldn't make a go of it, he uh, opened the gallery. But he still sort of plays at it. He has a small studio in the same building where I have mine. Goodbye, Mrs. York. You've been a great help. May Nurian is a damn liar. I don't know where she got her fake Yorks from, if that's what they are, but it sure as hell wasn't from me. If not you, who? How would I know? Look, I don't have to steal, and I don't have to forge anybody's work. Because you're a big success? Because I sure as hell am going to be. Bigger than that phony York ever dreamed of. Especially after my show next week. What if Nurian cancels the show? I'll sue it for every cent she's got. No. It's understandable. Painter works for years and years. Never really develops a style of his own. But he's got to live. So he rips off the work of a more successful artist. Get out of here. Why don't you just tell me? I said get out of here. Look, Blakely, get the hell out of here. You... Oh, you break my head. My painting head. I can always get you the name of a good lawyer. So you started out as an artist model. 
And you grew up in the Northeast, went to college in Colorado, and became a lawyer. We've been over all that. Yeah, I guess we have. So you ever posed for Truman York? Once. But he was so strung out on coke, he never finished the painting. Well, that's too bad. What do I care? I've run into a lot of whacked out painters in my time. That's how I got into print work. People are saying, and the money's a lot better. I said that before, too, didn't I? Yeah, I guess so. You know, I've got this early call for this gig tomorrow, so, um, maybe you could take me home? Yeah, sure. Okay. Check, please. Look, it's not even 10 o'clock. Something bothering you? Well, there's nothing bothering me. I mean, because if there is, I could come up, we can have a cup of coffee and talk about it. It's just too late. And remember, I warned you that you may have the wrong idea about me. Well, what about if I call you tomorrow night? I don't think so. Thank you for dinner, though. Yeah. Maybe you could help me out. Maybe. Maybe not. Do you remember Miss Sikorsky coming here with a man named Damien Blakely a week ago Saturday night? Damien Blakely? Yeah, they're old friends. It's an artist type about my height. Evidently, they go out a lot. She doesn't go out a lot with anyone you described. Well, who does she go out a lot with? Who knows? I guess what I mean is, she goes out a lot with someone else. Matter of fact, if she keeps her pattern, she'll probably be heading out again any minute. What kind of car does she drive? Red and gray Mustang, parked right out front. Thanks. We do not have time to screw around. Let's take five minutes among ourselves and get this all worked out. Okay? I'll be back. Hi, gorgeous. Hey. So, what's the evil word? The evil word is very good. I got the money. I got all the money. The whole 35000 mm -hmm. Beautiful, babe. Beautiful. Yeah, and not only did Hope have artwork in his office, he had photos, personal stuff. His climbing expeditions, racing stints, stuff like that. I still think Blakely's our man. He's a serious contender. Contender? Blakely must have found out that York was at his wife's studio and killed him so that York couldn't expose him as a forger. Tell him, it may be difficult. I'll need the phone records of every public phone booth within a block or two of the Nurian Gallery. What for? If you're right about Blakely, it could help prove he was the anonymous caller who tipped off Joel. 
I'll get on it right away. Oh, and uh, I located Professor Bainsworth. Joe, see if the professor has a copy of that tape. And tomorrow afternoon, I'll have those financial records. The hearing's at 10. 6 p.m., all right? Right now, I'm betting Blakely's records are the only ones that count. He's not the only suspect. Barry, this is our murderer. Yes. Miss Gilman had told me she had seen Truman York and he was staying at the Brown Palace. I had my driver take me there. So you heard Mr. York give the cab driver the address of Mrs. York's studio at 122 Market Street, did you not? I suppose I did, but I didn't go there. You can ask my driver. I did. But he only works for you during the day. Mr. Hope, why were you going to York's hotel? I had paid a very high price for one of his paintings. York claimed it was a fake. I wanted to find out why. Now, would you please tell the court where you were on the evening of Mr. York's murder? Certainly. At her request, I had dinner with Lisanne York to discuss my purchase of one of her husband's paintings. Which you did not buy. Well, at the present time, <clears throat> I'm experiencing a small cash flow problem. And Mr. York's Lazarus-like return from the dead would have caused a serious decline in the value of his paintings. Perhaps. And perhaps you were about to lose the more than $1 million you'd paid the Nurian Gallery for a painting that was being called a fake. Mr. Hope, where did you and Mrs. York dine that evening? Chez Louis. Very fine food, Chez Louis. And during dinner, you were absent for approximately one half hour. I know, it was very rude, but I urgently had to make an overseas phone call. Isn't Chez Louis only four short blocks from the studio where Mr. York was murdered? I really don't know. One half hour would be plenty of time for a man to travel four blocks, commit a murder, and return to a restaurant to finish that wonderful dinner. Objection? Argumentative? Move to strike. Sustained and granted. Mr. Hope, you have some photographs on your office wall. In one of them, you are part of a mountain climbing expedition. So what? So, whoever killed Mr. York had to climb to the roof and then rappel to the floor below, a skill with which you are more than familiar. Objection, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Mr. Fryman. Mr. Hope, I have never climbed a mountain. Now, the distance between the skylight and the floor of the studio is roughly 16 to 18 feet. In your opinion, could an inexperienced climber like myself have been able to make such a vast descent? Of course, anybody in this room could have done that. That's including the judge. One more question, Mr. Hope. Do you have any proof that you did indeed make an overseas call from the phone booth at Chez Louis? As a matter of fact, the bill arrived yesterday, and the call was charged to my credit card. You think you might bring us a copy of that bill, Mr. Hope? Mr. Mason might find it interesting reading. I read it. I have it right here. Nothing further. Witness may step down. Next witness, Mr. Mason. The defense calls Philip Graff. Mr. Graff, at my request, you examined a group of paintings allegedly executed by Truman York, paintings purchased from the Nurian Gallery over the past few years. Is that correct? Yes. And what was your opinion, your opinion, of those paintings? Each and every one of them was a fake. Uh, brilliantly executed, but nonetheless forgeries. You're sure? Mr. Mason, I have been Truman York's art dealer for 15 years. I know the entire body of his work. Including the ones York was shipping to you from Mexico after he was dead? Yes, those two. No further questions. Mr. Fryman. Oh, nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Mason. 
Please call Rene Nurian to the stand. Every York painting I bought and then sold was supplied to me by Damien Blakely. Weren't you just a little suspicious as to where Blakely got those paintings? No. No? No? Thank you, Miss Nurian. No more questions. Mr. Fryman? Uh, no questions. No more questions? No more questions, Miss Nurian. You may step down. Hmm. Defense calls Damien Blakely. <clears throat> Mr. Blakely, we've heard Renee Nurian testify that you were her sole supplier of the alleged York paintings. Alleged? Hell, they were genuine. Where did you obtain those paintings? Different collectors. Why didn't they sell their paintings through uh, legitimate dealers? OK. I know this will probably get me in trouble, but you see, word got around that I could uh, Wash them. Wash them? Well, you know, launder them. They'd give me the paintings, and I'd arrange a sale where they wouldn't have to pay any capital gains tax. Uh, you also heard Philip Graff testify that all those paintings were fakes. Yeah. Well, maybe Mr. Graff has his reasons for saying that. Like maybe he wanted to keep the prices up on the Yorks he was smuggling in from Mexico. Mr. Blakely, is it true you paint in various styles? Yes. But if you're implying that I forged those paintings, forget it. I never forged anybody's work in my life. I've heard you say that before. Now, where were you at the time Truman York was murdered? Oh, I spent the night with a model I uh, work with, Mala Sikorsky. No more questions. But I reserve the right to recall this witness. Mr. Fryman? No questions. Witness is excused, subject to recall. Defense calls Mala Sikorsky. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth? I think this could be our whole case. I do. I think so, too. Why don't you ask me what I think? Miss Sikorsky, you just heard Damien Blakely testify that you and he spent the night of the murder together. Yes. And before this trial began, you signed a statement to that effect. Yes, I did. Was that signed statement true? No, it was not. And you have no knowledge of Mr. Blakely's whereabouts on that night? No, none. Why were you willing to lie for Mr. Blakely? He gave me $35,000. You were willing to perjure yourself for money? Yes. You no longer need the money? No, I need the money very much. My husband is in the hospital dying of hepatic encephalopathy caused by drug abuse. I'm the one that got him hooked on drugs. I kicked the habit, but he couldn't. I'm working with a friend of mine on a drug program, and we're trying to collect money. But I need money now for my husband's hospital bills. You see, we don't have any insurance, so no matter how much I work, the money's never nearly enough. So I thought I would pick up a fast 35000 from Damien. I'm sorry I lied, but when you love someone, you do things. And I'd probably do it again. But I'm not lying now.
I don't believe you are. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. okay. You see, after that uh, guy from your office called, I figured I might be a suspect or something, and it'd be better if I had an alibi. So I made the deal with Mala. You know, but I had nothing to do with killing York. I didn't even know the guy. Mr. Blakely, what if I told you that moments after you followed Truman York out of the Nurian Gallery, a phone call was made to Joel McKelvey's studio? I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Mr. McKelvey is prepared to testify. It was your voice telling him Truman York was at the Brown Palace. So I made the call. So what? I... So you made the call. Why? Well, I was worried York might get me into some trouble I didn't deserve. I mean, and of course, everybody knew the way McKelvey felt about York. So I thought maybe if he knew where York was, he'd, uh, you know, he'd do something. Like what, sir? Well, like murder. Him. Like murder. Mm hmm? Mr. Blakely, isn't it true that you killed Truman York? because you were afraid he would reveal your forgeries? No. And you've got nothing to back that up. Oh, yes, I have. Right here. I have no further questions at this time, and I reserve the right to recall the witness. No questions. Then this witness is excused. And court is recessed till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What are you trying to do to me, Mr. Mason? Nothing, Mr. Graff. I was only attempting to get everything in this case before the court. That business of the paintings from Mexico could ruin me. Mr. Graff, Joel McKelvey isn't the only one who might have had reason to kill York. That's a key element of our defense. But if I accused anybody, it was Damien Blakely. Yes. <laughs> well, you're way off base there, too. What makes you think so? because there is no way that a mediocre hack like Blakely could possibly have faked those paintings. They're simply too good. He's right. Perry, I think you should look at these right away. Financial records? More of Blakely's, but very important. Why don't you just give me a summary? Over the last three and a half years, Blakely has deposited a, a series of sizable checks from Rene Nurian. For the fake Yorks? And each time, he immediately withdrew half the amount in cash. So he was paying somebody off. Evidently. Yeah, but who? Ken, go to Blakely's studio. Wait for him if you have to. Tell him I need to talk to him tonight, and I don't care how late it is. He won't be thrilled to see me. I have to speak to him before I get him back on the stand. On my way.
Easy. I can't face it anymore. Sorry about everything. Damien. I touched the note before I thought about fingerprints. Okay, Mr. Polanski. Well, too bad for you guys. This note isn't a little more specific. What does that mean? It means at least he could have confessed to York's murder. As it is, your guy is still on the hook, and your number one suspect has just been wheeled out of the door. He says in the notes, sorry about everything. Well, he could have meant that he was sorry about the paintings that he forged. This guy was facing some pretty stiff charges. Until tonight, it didn't seem to bother him. <laughs> well, evidently, it bothered him enough to put a bullet through his head. Maybe. We found his gun registration, sir, and it's a match. That doesn't mean it was suicide. Counselor, his gun, a suicide note, he's facing serious charges, maybe even a murder rap. Now, are you saying that it is not suicide, Counselor? In court this afternoon, Blakely walked off the stand as if he didn't have a care in the world. He looked as smug as he does in this picture. Something wrong, Perry? No. Brock's just helped me figure out who killed York and Blakely. It may be impossible to prove, but you can't call it wrong, can you? No. Uh, no. Yes, I'm currently chairman of the Department of Fine Arts at Midwestern University, and prior to that, I was professor of art at Lincoln College here in Colorado. And for the past 10 years, you've been engaged in collecting videotape interviews of American painters. Yes. Dr. Bainsworth, would you briefly explain your methodology? Certainly. I tape the interviews, and they may last as long as three or four hours, and then have them computerized. Now, in that way, my students and other researchers may either view the entire film or access the artist with a specific question. In other words, if one enters a question through an electronic keyboard, the response will appear on a video screen. Your Honor, I object to this entire line of questioning as totally irrelevant and diversionary. The purpose of Dr. Bainsworth's testimony is to lay a foundation for the appearance of my next witness. And who is your next witness, Counselor? Uh, I would like my next witness to be, in essence, Truman York. What's going on here, Your Honor? Mr. Mason is insulting this court. Truman York is dead. But he is recorded for many hours on videotape in interviews conducted by Dr. Bainsworth. Your Honor. Just a moment, please. Are you saying it is your wish to cross-examine a videotape? Mm. Well, yes, Your Honor. First question, please give us your name. Truman York is the real name. My parents were uh, ardent Democrats. Second question, how long have you been painting? Well, I guess you could say I've been painting uh, since I was about three years old when I, uh, when I decided that the family dog looked, <laughs> looked better with green stripes. <laughs> Yeah, but seriously, I guess. I, I guess uh, high school, I realized that I wanted to be a professional artist. Question three. Do you believe there are any specific rules to the creation of art? I think there's a basic truth uh, to art, and that's that there are no limits or rules. Uh, if there were, it would cease to be the full and free expression of the individual, which is what art is. <laughs> Or at least what it should be. Your Honor, how long are we to be subjected to this? Will there be a point, Mr. Mason? I believe so, Your Honor. Very well. Proceed. Last question. Are there any rules which you, as an artist, impose upon yourself? Well, uh, my one imperative is, is, that, is that I never do the same thing twice. See? or if I'm unable to, to, to capture the essence of a subject, um, I realize there's a, there's a lack of, of, of necessary empathy, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm on to the next thing. Thank you, Professor Bainsworth. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Mr. Freiman? 
At my house, my 10-year-old son plays the video games. No questions. Defense calls Lizanne York. No, I'm afraid I didn't know Damien Blakely. Then, of course, you've never been to his studio. No. As you know, Mrs. York, the subpoena that brought you here today also required you to bring with you what you claim to be the last painting of your late husband that you still own. You didn't have to subpoena me or the painting. I would have been happy to bring it here voluntarily. Nevertheless, I would like you to identify it for us. Yes, that's mine. Indicating the painting of a girl reading a book on a balcony. That was painted by your husband, Truman York? Of course. Defense requests that the painting be marked Exhibit D for identification. It will be so marked. Now, Mrs. York, I'd like to show you another painting. This painting belongs to Winston Hope, and it has hung in his office for many years. In light of your husband's imperative about never painting the same subject twice, can you explain what has happened here? Obviously, Mr. Hope's paintings are fake. I have no more questions at this time, but I reserve the right to recall the witness. Granted. Does the district attorney wish to cross-examine? No, Your Honor. The witness is excused, subject to recall. Defense recalls Philip Graff. I apologize for recalling you, Mr. Graff, but do you recognize this? Oh, yes, of course. Winston Hope bought this painting at the very first showing of Truman York's work. They actually was a favorite of True's. I had to talk him into parting with it. Your Honor, I ask that this painting be marked Defense Exhibit E for identification. It will be so marked. Mr. Graff, as Truman York's dealer for more than 15 years, did you ever know him to repeat a subject in his work? No, absolutely not. Truman was an absolute stickler about that. Then, how do you explain the painting there? Mrs. York testified it was painted by her husband. I can only assume that it is a fake. Thank you, Mr. Graff. No further questions. Mr. Fryman? Nothing, Your Honor. Witness is excused. Thank you. I recall... Lizanne York can request I be allowed to question her as a hostile witness. Granted. Mrs. York, isn't it true that you and Damien Blakely were business associates? I don't know what you're talking about. The two of you were in the business of selling forged paintings. Forgeries of your husband's work, selling them to the Nurian Gallery and possibly others. That's ridiculous. I didn't even know Damien Blakely. Blakely was the one who slipped the fakes into the art market, but you were the one who painted them. You were the one who painted the forgeries. That's crazy. Mrs. York, we know this painting is genuine. So according to your husband's own words, this one must be a fake. I submit in the four years you lived with York, you managed brilliantly to copy his exact technique and style. Your forgeries fooled everyone, everyone except your husband. If anyone was forging Truman's paintings, it must have been Damien Blakely. You and Mr. Blakely had a great thing going, didn't you? But it was threatened by your husband's sudden reappearance. Which of you decided York must be killed? Which of you decided Blakely should call Joel McKelvey so he could be set up to take the fall? This is all a lie. I submit that Damien Blakely murdered your husband the very evening you were having dinner with Winston Hope, a dinner intended to give you an alibi. But then suddenly, suddenly, Mrs. York, it became apparent to you Evidence was piling up against Blakely. You knew if he were arrested for York's murder, he'd name you. You're making all this up. So, Mrs. York, you went to his studio and calmly, 
calmly. Shot him dead. You didn't have to break in. Both of you had keys. His suicide note was an easy matter for a master forger, wasn't it? No. Why are you doing this to me? I told you before, I didn't even know Damien Blakely. Oh. That's right, I forgot. You didn't even know Damien Blakely. Mrs. York, we are showing you a blow-up of a photograph of Damien Blakely appearing on an advertising brochure for his exhibit at the Nurian Gallery. We'll mark this, Your Honor, Defense Exhibit F. No objection. It will be so marked. And this is a blow-up of a police photo taken at the scene of Blakely's alleged suicide, which we'll mark as Defense Exhibit G. No objection. It will be so marked. If you'll notice, both pictures feature the same chair and the same stand. In the police photograph, there is something missing. A piece of metal sculpture on the stand. This morning at 7.19, at my request, the police obtained a warrant, searched your studio, and found that. Look familiar? It should. It's the sculpture missing from the second photograph. Mrs. York, how did your original sculpture get to Damien Blakely's bedroom before he was killed? And how did it end up in your studio after he was killed? I don't know. I submit that after you shot and killed Damien Blakely, you took the sculpture so there would be no apparent link between you. But there was a link, wasn't there? A very deadly one. A deadly conspiracy. You conspired to kill your husband, and you murdered Damien Blakely, didn't you? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You conspired to kill your husband, and you murdered Damien Blakely, did you not? Well, I had to. Don't you see? Truman nearly destroyed me. He was a monster. Couldn't let him do that to me again. So I let Damien kill him. But he wasn't really dead. Not really. I saw Truman every time I looked in Damien's eyes. I just had to get free. You can understand that, can't you? Can't you? I understand that you conspired to murder your husband and then conspired to put the blame on Joel McKelvey for that murder. I understand that you did murder Damien Blakely. Do you understand all those things, Mrs. York? Your Honor, I move that all charges against Joel McKelvey be dismissed. Your Honor, the people have no objection. Motion granted, Mr. Mason. The defendant is free to go, and I order the witness, Lizanne York, be held on two charges of first-degree murder. This court is now adjourned.